This video provides easy to follow instructions for you to create and animate this hinge using Onshape. Click below in the video description. Here you will find links to all of the resources you need to complete this project. First, there is a link for a PDF instruction sheet. Click this link and open the project drawings and specifications in a new browser tab. Next, if you don't have an Onshape account, use one of these links to create a free account at the Onshape website. Last, there are links for each of the segments of this video. The video instruction is organized into six segments. In segment one, you will establish the design intent and preview the top-down modeling process using Onshape. In segment two, you will create the two leaves of the hinge. In segment three, you will create the hinge pin. In segment four, you will assemble the hinge. In segment five, you will use animation to view the operation of the hinge. In segment six, you will revise the design and check that it updates correctly. Now you are ready to begin the project. Before we model the part in Onshape, we have to establish our design intent. We want our model to be flexible to possible design changes. First, we can identify any parameters that might change during the design process. For this hinge, we may need to adjust its length. This would be in a range of 20 millimeters larger or smaller. Also, when the length is changed, we want the length of the knuckles to adjust so that they remain at a total of five. Last, we want the hinge pin to update to the new length. Next, we can identify what parameters should remain unchanged. We want the screw holes to remain in their current locations relative to the center and the ends. We want the width to remain unchanged. To establish and maintain the relationships between multiple features and parts, we will use a top-down design method. Using a top-down modeling method helps establish our design intent by modeling the parts together in the same part studio and sharing the associated parameters between parts. In the Onshape document, the length can be set as a variable. We can then use this parameter to drive changes to all of the parts and enforce our design intent. So how do we want the assembly to behave when the length parameter is changed? It would update to the new length meeting the design intent without errors. In this segment, we will create the leaves of the hinge. Let's start by examining the drawings. This drawing shows views of both leaves of the hinge assembled together. There is an isometric drawing to help us visualize the part in three dimensions. There are two orthographic views. In the lower left, a front view. Aligned above the front view is a top view. There is a detail view which shows the dimensions of one hinge barrel. Looking closer at the front view, the hole for the hinge pin has a diameter of 4 millimeters. The outside diameter of the barrel is 8 millimeters. The distance from the center to the outside edge of one leaf is 25 millimeters. The thickness of the leaf is 2 millimeters. Measuring from the center point of the barrel, the top face of the leaf is 0.5 millimeters below. We can start using this front view for our base sketch. I have started a new document in Onshape and named it Hinge. First, I need to check the workspace units to make sure that length is set to millimeters and mass is set to grams. Click on the sketch button on the toolbar to start our base sketch. Click on the front sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal. Use P on the keyboard to turn off the visibility of the planes. Let's start with the barrel. Click on center point circle on the sketch toolbar. Click coincident to the origin for the center. Enter four millimeters for the center pinhole. Click again coincident to the origin and drag a larger circle. Enter 8 millimeters for the diameter. Now we can make the leaf. Click on corner rectangle on the toolbar. Hover on the origin and move the cursor below keeping the vertical icon visible. Click to start the rectangle vertical to the origin and stretch it to the left. For the length, enter 25 millimeters. For the thickness, enter 2 millimeters. Click on the dimension tool on the toolbar. Click on the origin at the center of the barrel and the top corner of the rectangle. Set this distance to 0.5 millimeters. This looks correct. Use the green check to close. We can now extrude one leaf of the hinge. Looking back at the drawing, the length is 76 millimeters. We have identified in the design intent that this size might need to change, so we will make its value a variable. Click on the Extrude tool on the Feature toolbar. This will be new. For the sketch region, click on the sketch on the feature list. The direction should be in back of the sketch plane. Click on depth and then use the hashtag from the keyboard. 
This will prompt us to create a new variable. Enter length for the variable name. This should open the variable dialog box. This is a length. Set the value at 76 millimeters. Use enter to close this box and enter again to set the depth. This looks right. Use the green check to close. Notice on the feature list, the variable has been added above extrude one. Looking at the drawings again, let's examine the hole locations. All three holes are located 10.5 millimeters from the outside edge. The middle hole is centered on the leaf. The end holes are located 12 millimeters from the top and bottom edge. We will use a sketch point to place the hole locations. Click to create a new sketch. Click on the top face of the leaf for the sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal. Click on the sketch point tool on the toolbar. Click to place the first point. Click on the dimension tool. Set the distance from the outside edge at 10.5 millimeters. Click on the point tool again. Hover on the first point and move down keeping the vertical icon visible. Click to place a point at the midpoint. Click again to place a point near the bottom. Use the dimension tool again to place the point 12 millimeters from the top and bottom. This looks good. Use the green check to close. Looking back at the drawing, the holes are countersunk for the screws. This is a 3.2 millimeters through hole. There is a diameter of 6.72 millimeters at the top of the countersink. These specifications would use M3 countersink screws. Click on the hole tool. These will be metric. They will be countersink. They will be clearance holes for M3 screws. I can see that this results in a 3.2 millimeters through hole and a 6.72 millimeters countersink diameter. Click on the sketch points on the leaf face. This looks right. Use the green check to close. We can now create the other side of the hinge by mirroring this part we just created. On the feature toolbar, click on the mirror tool. This will be a part mirror. It will be a new part. For the entities to mirror, click on part one in the parts list. For the mirror plane, use P on the keyboard to turn on the visibility of the planes. Click on the right plane. Look again and make sure that this will be a new part. You should see part two listed on the parts list. This looks good. Use the green check to close. Notice, now we have two parts and the barrel portions of each part overlap the other in the parts studio. We can now use this overlap to remove portions of the barrels to create the individual knuckles of the hinge. Looking back at the drawing, the barrel is divided into five equal segments that make the knuckles of the hinge. The detailed drawing shows the dimensions. The width is 9 mm, which leaves 0.5 mm on each side of the barrel. The length is 15.2, which is the length of 76 mm divided into five equal segments. We will use a sketch to define the cuts for making the knuckles. Let's use a section view while we make the sketch. Click on the camera and render button. Choose section view from the menu. For the cutting plane, click on the top view from the feature list. Click on the sketch tool on the toolbar and choose the top plane for the sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal. Click on corner rectangle on the sketch toolbar. Sketch a rectangle below the model. Right click and end the rectangle tool. Click on the dimension tool from the toolbar. For the top of the rectangle, set the width to 9 millimeters. For the height, from the keyboard use the hashtag to start with a variable and choose length. This will be a formula, so enter forward slash for divided by and then five for the number of knuckles. The length divided by five. By using a formula here, if we change the length of the hinge, the number and size of the knuckles will update with the change. From the constraint menu, choose midpoints. Click on the origin at the bottom of the model. Click on the line at the bottom of the rectangle. This aligns and constrains the knuckle sketch to the part. To create the additional knuckle rectangles, we will use a linear pattern. Click on the linear pattern tool on the toolbar. Use a window to select the rectangle. Click on the parts and turn off their visibility while we create the pattern. For the rows, double click on the number of entities and enter one. For the column, double click on the number of entities and enter five. For the distance between entities on the column, double click and enter the formula. Length divided by five and use enter to apply. 
Turn on the visibility of the parts to check and verify that it matches. This looks good. Click the left mouse button to accept the pattern. Use the green check to end the sketch. We can now remove portions of the barrel for the knuckles. Click on the extrude button on the toolbar. Click on remove. In the parts list, click on part two. For the end type, choose through all. Check the box for symmetric. Click on the two rectangles from the sketch to remove them. This looks good. Use the green check to close. Click on the extrude button again. Use the same settings. Click to turn on the visibility of part two. Click on the sketch in the feature list to turn on its visibility. Click on the three rectangles from the sketch to remove them from the side. Click on the merge scope and click on part two. Right click and choose turn off section view. Toggle the view of each part to verify the results. This looks good. Use the green check to close. In this segment, we will create the hinge pin. Click the sketch button to start a new sketch. Click on the bottom face of the hinge for the sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal. Click on the use tool on the toolbar. Click on the circle that is the hole for the hinge pin. This looks correct. Use the green check to end the sketch. Click on extrude on the toolbar. This will be a new part. Click on the sketch for the region. For the end type, use up to face. Click on the face of the opposite end of the hinge. This looks good. Use the green check to close. This completes all three parts for the hinge. On the parts list, click on all three parts to select them. Right click and assign material. Search for brass with a density of 0.008. Use the green check to select it. Right click again and choose edit appearance. Choose a color closer to brass. Last, rename each of the parts. Left. Right. And pin. In this segment, we will assemble the hinge. At the bottom of the screen, click on the blank assembly studio. If you don't have an assembly studio, click on the plus in the bottom left corner and choose create assembly. We will start by inserting the base part. Click on the insert button on the assembly toolbar. Click on the left leaf for the base part. Click the green check to close. Right click on the leaf and choose fix from the menu. This will lock down this half of the hinge so it won't move in the assembly. Click on insert again and insert the right leaf. Place this in the assembly window. Use the green check to close. We want the side to pivot, so we will use a Revolute Mate. Click on the Revolute Mate on the toolbar. For the first mate, choose a mate connector at the end of a barrel segment. For the second mate, choose a mate connector centered on the matching barrel segment. They should snap together. Use the play button in the dialog box to view the Revolute movement. This looks good. Use the green check to close. We can now place the pin. Click on the insert button. Place the pin into the assembly window. We will use a fasten mate to place the pin. For the first mate, click on a mate connector on the end of the pin. For the second, click on the mate connector at the bottom of the barrel. This looks correct. Use the green check to close. Our assembly is now complete. In this segment, we will use animation to view the operation of the hinge. On the mate feature list on the left, locate the Revolute mate. Right click on the Revolute mate and choose Animate from the menu. In the dialog box, on the playback type, choose Single. Click on the play to see the default direction for one cycle. I can see this is going in the opposite direction that I want and I only want the hinge to turn half a revolution. For the end value, enter negative 180 degrees. Click on Play Single. This looks right. Change the playback type to reciprocate and push play again. Change the steps from 300 to 200 to speed it up a little. Notice that you can rotate and view the animation while it is moving. Use the stop button and end the animation. In this segment, we will make some revisions to the hinge design. First, we will change the length to 90 millimeters and see if it will update as expected. 
In the Part Studio, click on the button for the Variable Table. Here we can change the length from 76 to 90. We should see the parts update to the new length, and the relative placement of the holes and the hinge knuckles should also change. There should be no errors on the feature list. Let's look at the Assembly Studio. This has updated also. Let's change the length again to a smaller value. Enter 60 millimeters. This updates correctly as well. This demonstrates the power of top-down modeling in allowing multiple parts to update when shared parameters are changed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, look for more projects at cadvideotutor.com. Also, hit the like or subscribe button. If you have a question, leave a comment.